Hi, this is Justin with OCLEF, and this is a video about interpretation and perspectives we can take towards interpretation and teaching it. The piece I want to use as an example here is Arietta by Edvard Grieg, one of his lyric pieces and one of his most beautiful pieces. student who might not feel comfortable expressing what they think the piece's emotional content is, or who's just not quite sure what the piece means to them yet, what can happen is, as a teacher, we'll spoon feed them our own interpretation. And rather than feeling free, like they're expressing themselves, that they're really getting to know the music, the student is going to be rehearsing and reciting verbatim the ideas that we're giving to them. So as a teacher, and also as a performer, I began to think about ways that we could circumvent this whole process of spoon feeding and of feeling sort of stuck in a rote recitation of a piece rather than speaking the piece fluently and expressively. And it's at this point I kind of want to draw an analogy between playing a piece of music and Monet's haystacks. Monet, as you probably know, often liked to draw a single subject many times. So, of course, one of his most famous series is of these haystacks, the same haystacks, but in many different contexts. Sometimes he would draw them in winter, where the light was sort of diffuse, caught behind a cloud. But then he discovered that the light had an entirely different character on a winter's day when there were no clouds, where maybe it was a sunset. And of course, color and light were reflected very differently during different times of year. In summer, in autumn, and by painting the same subject many times, in different times of year, in different lighting conditions, lighting them from different angles or from different distances, Monet really captured these haystacks in a way that he couldn't just by doing a single painting. I think when we play music and when we practice it, it helps to take a similar approach. So rather than sit down with a student or with yourself and say, this piece is nostalgic and I'm going to try to play with as misty and nostalgic a sound as I can make, maybe it would be good to try a few different opportunities or perspectives like Monet did. So what can be helpful to generate ideas is just to say, let's play this phrase in many different ways. Let's play it very simply, with no rubato, simple, carefree, happy, and uncomplicated, and see what that would sound like. That's a freely flowing kind of interpretation. But let's say the next day we're in a different mood and we want to paint a totally different kind of character with this piece. Well, then you could say, let's play it as slowly as we possibly can. Like we don't want to let a single note go and that it should be very, very sad as if seen from a great distance and see what that would sound like.
up with many different kinds of perspectives. Of course, the ideal perspective, the one you'll probably settle on, you know, when you feel comfortable with the piece, is somewhere between those two extremes I just demonstrated. The point of this is not to always play in a way that's tasteful or correct, but it's to stretch the limits of what you're able to express at the keyboard. And it's to explore what you respond to, what you identify with, what feels natural to you, so that you end up finding your own interpretation rather than mimicking another person's. I hope this idea is useful to you or to your students as you teach them. And of course, I'm always really happy if you leave comments, if I can hear your thoughts about this, if you've tried it in your own teaching. And if you can add to anything I say here, that's always something I really like to see. So leave a comment, please, if you have something to say. And if not, thanks for joining me.